Western New York. It's the Ottawa Senators and the Buffalo Sabres on Canadian Tire Senators Hockey on TSN. Starting goal is brought to you by Scotiabank. You're richer than you think. Scotiabank, and it is once again Robin Leonard for the Ottawa Senators. Allowed three goals on 32 shots in that loss to Columbus. He has one win in his last nine starts. Jonas Enrod for the Buffalo Sabres has the worst goal support in the NHL this year. Just 1.66 goals per game, and there is Patrick Weirkosh back in the Ottawa lineup, Jamie. Sat out the last couple games, gets an opportunity to show the Ottawa Senators that he needs to be in the lineup both every night. Cody Ceci is a healthy scratch tonight. Chris Phillips remains out of the Ottawa lineup. And here's Tyler Myers jumping in. The former Rookie of the Year plays it down in the corner. Less than three weeks to go to the NHL trade deadline. There's a press box full of pro scouts here tonight. And Myers is one of the guys that's been talked about as a potential trade target for contenders. Well, I would think he would draw considerable interest. He's a big guy and, you know, what? I don't know if he's topped off, but sometimes the grass is greener on the other side, and teams are certainly trying to see if they can turn his game around and stabilize it. Just in his sixth year at the age of 24. And Zemlis Gergensen's looked that high in the air. Rossi goes on to Mazzaros, who got slammed there by Jared Count, and Chris Neal's back to pick it up. And Neal, another guy that has been talked about endlessly in the last couple of days. Well, he would add a lot of depth and, I would think, toughness, and... You would think that the Western Conference teams would be looking at him. A little tougher style of play, and you know Neil's the type of guy who could certainly give you fourth line minutes. Kyle Turris in the shoots. He ripped that wide. Now Lazar on it. Curtis Lazar scored his first National Hockey League goal in this building in December. As Weirkosh picks it up. Great move by Weirkosh. Works it back in front and shoots, and Enroff gets a piece of that. And now Mark Stone works in. Stone winds his way across. Shoots it tipped in front. Enroff makes the stop. Here's Turris back on it. He shoots as well. You've got a Sabres defenseman, Reese Delano, without a stick as Turris plays it back to the point. We're cautious shot that goes wide. Scooped up by Lazar. And he backhands it back in the corner. Still no stick for Reese Delano trying to fight off Stone and finally the puck comes free to Drew Stafford who breaks it ahead. Stafford. Across to Brian Flynn, the return pass goes off the skate of Weirkosh, and Stone is back with, with Turris. Kyle Turris works in, has a look and shoots, and ramps off the stick of Mazzaros, up and out of play. Couple scoring opportunities early on. Patrick Weirkosh is going to get one. Going to make a nice little move. Turris pops it down. Now he's going to go First around to brought to you by the Academy of and Hockey. walk right to the net. It ends up going wide, and then Kyle Turris is going to get a nice little redirection in front. Jonas Enroth has to be sharp, but it's good hand-eye coordination by Kyle Turris. Good push to the, to the net by the Ottawa Senators early on in this game. Ottawa's won seven of the last ten meetings. Sabres won a shootout this year, then lost the second match. Both these teams are struggling mightily on the power play. That's been a huge part of the problem. Buffalo is the lowest scoring team in the league for the second consecutive year. In fact, last year they were the first team in a dozen years to finish with fewer than two goals per game, and they're doing it again this year. Topping themselves, Gordon? Hard to do, <laughs> and hard to win. Yeah. At it's, about 1.8 goals per game. It has been a struggle for them, but I mean, that's the design rebuild right now, and you would think that they're hoping three, four years from now, getting some good draft picks and, and doing it the right way, building from within, that this team will be potentially a powerhouse. Matt Molson with a quick shot, and that's knocked away by Leonard. Now Myers back for it, has it stripped away by MacArthur. The former Sabre works in, sends it across, and McCulloch can't get a shot away. Milan McCulloch back at the point. Grimo with a shot that's tipped wide by MacArthur. And MacArthur now for Zibanejad. His shot dribbles down in front, and Enroth lead that up with Josh Georges fencing in front, along with McCulloch. Some great work by Clark MacArthur along the wall. He's just going to strip Tyler Myers. Myers very casual on the play. MacArthur gets inside position. Now you're off to the races, two on one. Call it can't, can't get the handle on it. It's just really good work by MacArthur, though, to identify the pucks coming on the boards. Myers has to be stronger on his stick on that play. It's one of the knocks on Myers, though. Continues to struggle with the puck sometimes. And again, he, he's a young defenseman. They believe that you can really work with him, and he has got tremendous upside. But that's a detail of the game that he needs to be stronger on. 
You saw Ted Nolan there. For all the talk about McDavid and the high draft pick, that's not what Ted Nolan wants to see. And it's certainly not what he wants to talk about. No, not at all. I mean, guys in the dressing room aren't thinking that there's a, a, a knight in shining armor coming on a horse in McDavid. I mean, they want to win and try and win, and that's the frustrating part if you're a, a team like the Buffalo Sabres. There's tremendous pride in that room. Guys like Josh Georges, Matt Molson, they right. sign here. They're here long term. They don't care about the future. Ryan Gionta, you see there, also came over in the offseason. McDavid played a game here this year, a prospects game, and the building was full. A lot of attention being paid to McDavid. Well, everyone's talking he's going to be a generational player. There's no doubt about that. Well, if they get him. Yeah, if they get him, there's no guarantee of that. That's, so, the, that's the, the big challenge here. They lose the lottery. They're still going to get a good player, but it could not be McDavid. Chipped in by Torres. Now a stone goes looking for it. The NHL draft lottery is changing this year and again next year. Used to be that if you won the lottery, you'd move up four spots. So only the top four teams, or the, which are the bottom four teams in the standings, could have the first overall pick. As of this year, every team has a shot at the first pick. The worst you can draft if you finish last overall is second. But next year, the top three spots will go in the lottery. As Tara shoots, that goes wide. Looks on by Lazar. So if you finish last overall next year, you could pick as late as fourth in the draft. Well, there's some teams that are really pushing for that. Carolina's come on a little bit lately. As we see the Toronto Maple Leafs fall in the standings, I mean, there's a lot of people in Toronto that are hoping they uh, end up getting into those final couple spots. He is off for Hoffman, plays it back, and for with shot, it's on the line, and stayed out. <laughs> Somehow, Enroth keeps that out, and referee Greg Kimberly says no goal. That was right on the line. Enroth has no stick now, it's in the net. So apparently Enroth's stick is the only thing that wound up in the goal, and here's Pajot with it. Pajot feeds back to the point for Carlson. And Eric Carlson walks the line. Slips it down to Mathot. Mark Mathot shoots for a sharp angle. Enroth's stick is right behind him. And he finally reaches back to get it. Outstanding chance. And for the challenge with a guy like Jonas Enroth, he's 5'10". He's the smallest goaltender in the National Hockey League. So even if he's doing a starfish there, he's not like he's covering a lot of net. In comes McCulloch with it now. Shoots and trying to find the tip for Zibanejad. Just missed. Here's MacArthur back with it. Batting there with Mike Weber. MacArthur still on it. Gianta plays that to the line and out. And here's Grabo with it. Eric Grabo works his way in. Lost the puck to finish it. Winds and fires. A bullet shot goes wide. Now Cowan shoots. That's blocked in front. McCulloch feeds it across. Cowan gets it again. Cowan rips the shot. Just wide of the goal. Grabo pitches up. Shots are 5-1 Ottawa in the early going. Still no score. And the puck bounces around in front. Now Gianta has it. And Gianta chips that by Cowan as Molson comes into the forecheck. Matt Molson was a Buffalo Sabre last year. Traded to Minnesota at the deadline, then returned in the summer as a free agent, signed a five-year deal with the Sabres. That's good for him, but I'm sure he's missing the days of getting passes from John Tavares. Play for the Islanders, Buffalo, and Minnesota last year. And has not been nearly as productive since leaving the island. Legwan shoots from a sharp angle. That goes wide. Now we're Weirkosh back with it for Condra. Legwan battles with Zadorov. The puck loses the side of the goal. And Enroth will pounce on that. 13.09 to go in the opening period. Enroth with some dandy stops, including this one. Just in the nick of... Tyler Myers is going to drag the puck off of the goal line. That's as close as you're going to get to scoring a goal without it going in over the line. Pajot bats it out of the air. It rolls over the back of Enroth. Myers and Georges are there battling. It's a bouncing puck. Ooh. And at the last second, Tyler Myers on the back end is able to swipe it out and keep this game at 0-0. That's terrific work by the defender, Tyler Myers, and Josh Georges bailing out their goaltender. And that's where Enroth is going to have to bail out these two gentlemen at some point during the game if they have a, an egregious giveaway in front of them. At some point, Enroth would likely want his teammates to bail him out once in a while, <laughs> maybe four or five goals. A little goal support wouldn't hurt. 
Buffalo's been shut out of league high nine times, and Jimmy, they've been held to one goal or less 26 times this year. Yeah, it is a rough ride, and mentally that's tough on a goaltender, knowing that you give up a bad one or you even give up a couple goals in a game, it pretty much lights out, and that's a, that's a real challenge for a goaltender, knowing going into the game that you're going to be battling that type of lack of goal support. That's Keys to the Game, brought to you by Tim Hortons, official coffee of the NHL. Well, if you're the Ottawa Senators, execute early. You're getting opportunities towards the net, but you've got to find a way to find the back of the net. Terrific passes, get your pace game going. And if you're the Bu Buffalo Sabres, this is a team that put 10 shots on goal last game against the New York Islanders. Everything has to be funneled towards Robin Leonard, who right now is in a lounge chair at the other end. Not the first time this year the Sabres have been held to 10 shots. And there's teams I've played on where they had 10 shots in a sequence. You don't exactly storm the goal here in Buffalo most nights. <laughs> there's Flynn on it. Around for Felino. Thanks it back at the point that's bobbled by Reese DeLinen who fires it back in. So for the Buffalo Sabres, you think the, the building blocks are Reese DeLinen and Zadorov on the, on the back end. Yep. You got Sam Reinhardt who went back to junior hockey after playing nine games here at the start of the year. And that's where it begins. Well, and you, like you say, if Tyler Myers is a player that goes, then, you know, you, you hope to fetch back a real solid player, a young player that you can build around as well. In comes advantage, Jad centers it. That pass knocked away. As Josh George is going to stick on that. Of course, the Sabres ended that long losing streak in Montreal the other night. Much to the relief of George's, who's been painfully watching that as Zibanejad rips it high and wide. Now Zibanejad lost the puck in the corner to George's. Myers back on it. Set MacArthur flying. And it's moved out by Ellis. Fourth line on the ice for Buffalo. And Nicholas Delorier plays it in. Cowan swings it back around. The shots are six to one Ottawa. Shot total could be a lot higher, Gord, if Ottawa would hit the net. I mean, I've seen three or four opportunities where you've had Good shots towards the net, but you just miss it. Your sights are a little bit off, and Mika Zibanejad has that opportunity. McCulloch puts it on a tee for him. He's in a good scoring position. He's looking top glove, and he just misses the net by a little bit. He's got a terrific release, and it's real tricky coming off of his stick. Tough for a goaltender to read. Enroth is cheating a little bit of glove, wants to give it to him. Zibanejad just misses it, so again, you said six shots on goal, but I'm looking at at least 11 or 12 if they hit the net. We have the shot attempts at 17 to 2 in favor of Ottawa. Well, there you go. A lot higher number. Math was never my strength. Better get on it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to become mandatory now. Yeah, it is. I was at the Ottawa Analytics Conference over the weekend and some great things being said. So I just was a fly on the wall in the background just taking it all in. Beyond save percentage, are we finding a definitive way to measure goaltenders yet? Uh, it's getting there. In talking to a lot of the analytics people, they they still believe goaltending analytics are, are quite a ways off. Steve Valaket's doing some terrific work down in New York, something called the Royal Road. So I think there's some work to be done on that. There's a website called War on Ice that is trying to track scoring chances and, and, and dig a little bit deeper into it. But... Uh, Outside of goaltending, you know, there, there's a, a lot of stats that are really being measured that are helping uh, helping people evaluate players. And then there's the analytic that defines the Buffalo Sabres. They lose too much. Yeah, that, the wins and losses, that's, a, that's one that's been around for a long time. And, you know, it is a struggle. And, it, and that's the one thing that it's, it's hard to fast forward time. You know, the Buffalo fan base is going to be patient. They're watching this team go through some struggles. But... You know, bigger picture, it's, it's tough to do it and live it on a daily basis. And, you know, Sens fans can can also can also, also attest to that because, you know, they're down around the bottom of the standings too. And, you know, they've got some key pieces they've got to sort out. Mark McDott, what are you going to do with him? And Chris Neal and a couple other players. We'll talk to Bruce Garriock of the Ottawa Senate in our first intermission about the McDott contract talks about Perhaps some Ottawa interest in Evander Kane as well. It's, you may have heard Bob McKenzie talk earlier on Sports Center on Insider Trading about Buffalo's potential interest in Kane. 
I think there's a lot of teams that are interested in Kane and probably kicking tires to see what it would take to get him out of Winnipeg. At the line, Borbienski holds it, fires right on goal, and Interloff kicks that away. Now centered by Condra, and that missed leg one. Here's Chris Stewart, a long cross ice pass for Ennis. Lays it back through the middle, and in comes Gergensen. Then with Gergensen's backhand shot, flutters on goal. There's the second shot for Buffalo with 9.48 to go in the first period. No score. Seen outside, curling going on. The Harbor Center built right next door, a brand new facility. Terry Pagula, the owner of the Sabres and the Buffalo Bills, has sunk nearly $2 billion in this community, buying the two pro sports teams in construction. The Harbor Center will have a 6,000-seat arena inside it, Hockey Academy. And Buffalo will build a dress, build a dress really rather, for the 2018 World Junior Championship. Buffalo, of course, the host city in 2011. Dave Cameron, the Ottawa coach, doesn't want to revisit that gold medal game anytime soon. No, I would say not. A 3-0 lead that disappeared in this building, but Buffalo was a tremendous host city, and the U.S. will host the 2018 tournament. In comes Curtis with a shot off the shoulder of Enroth. That staggered him in the Buffalo goal. And now Stafford back the other way. Drew Stafford for Marcus Foligno. Shoots it down softly on Leonard. And he knocks that away. Shots are 8-2 to two in favor of Ottawa. They did not give Buffalo a shot on goal in that last attempt. No, it was going wide, Gord. And yeah, it's a shot attempt, but both shots on goal. Gergensen's oh, a, a they backhand. Just, they just did give him a shot for that. Well, there's a little, little hometown scorekeeping. Say, hometown discount. There's Grabo with a shot that got knocked away in front. And Pajo plays it down for Shiazon. Alex Shiazon down to Hoffman. That pass knocked away. And Tori Mitchell lost it back to Hoffman, who came racing back. Matt Molson sends it in. We got a penalty coming. It's a trip. And it will go against the Buffalo Sabres. Buffalo penalty number 12. So Gionta gets called for the trip at the Ottawa line. And the Senators' power play will go to work. Neutral zone trip here. This reaches in on Mike Hoffman, the right leg and the body. He backs up and Gianta pleads his case, but certainly it's a neutral zone trip there and no getting around that. Ottawa Senators power play needs to get going here. Talking to Eric Carlson this morning, says they like the fact of their entries and their setups, but they're not getting enough gritty chances towards the net. Maybe one pass and shoot away. Turris wins the face off as he fires it on goal. Enroth makes a stop, loose in front. McCulloch taps it wide. Ottawa over its last 13 on the power play, two for the last 29. Sabres, by the way, have allowed more power play goals than any team in the league. Yet another category in which Buffalo is last. Carlson feeds across. Hard drive by Weirkosh, bounces around in front. Meyer swept that away. Weirkosh back on it. Into the corner for Stone. Around he goes for Turris. Kyle Turris. Dribbles it back for Carlson across the top, being watched by Gergensen. And now Turris shoots and escape bounces right back to him. Turris drops it back for Carlson. He winds and fires, scores! Eric Carlson, power play goal! And Ottawa takes the lead. Well, we talked about it just going into the power play. How is the simplistic approach for the Ottawa Senators? It was going to be one pass and hammer the puck towards the net. That was the third attempt. Carlson's going to get it back at the point, going to throw it over to Turris. Shot comes back. Now it's Carlson that's just going to find some room. And you can see bodies in front. Tyler, Tyler Myers, big frame. Jonas Enroth doesn't track it whatsoever. It ends up in the back of the net. But it's keeping it simple as you get a good look of what Jonas Enroth was unable to see. And it hits Gergensen's stick, changes directions, and ends up going on the glove side. No chance for Enroth on the play. But that's just good work by the Ottawa Senators, keeping it simple and hammering it towards the net. There is the 48th power play goal allowed this year by the Buffalo Sabres as they extend their lead in that somewhat dubious category. Contrast that with Chicago, which is allowed 18. <laughs> yeah, there's a little difference in the organizations right now. People forget that Chicago had a lot of lean years. Yeah. Built through the draft very patiently, made some good trades. 
In comes Neal. Neal in, shoots, and Roth the save. The rebound skipped away from Leguan. But there's, oh, look out. Hit from behind there as Nicholas Delorier slammed down Conner, who's not happy about that. Now Delorier hops on him, but the initial penalty was going to Delorier for the hit from behind. Well, you get into that danger zone, Gordon. You have to brace yourself sometimes. Guy gives you a little push, and you go into the boards quite awkwardly. And Condren certainly not happy with that hit. Comes up swinging on Delorier. We'll see how this shakes out if Condra gets maybe an instigator because he came up swinging. He's going to kick wide. This is terrific work here by Chris Neal. Just driving and putting the puck towards the net. Enroth makes a terrific save. Now Condra turns and wants to protect the puck, and Delorier just drives right through him. This is a challenge sometimes. When you turn your back on the play, you've got to brace yourself sometimes, but the player at Delorier has to know if a guy is turning his back, you can't drive through the numbers. And easier said than done for me here on the sidelines because it's a split-second decision you have to make, but Delorier certainly hits him right in the numbers. Condra not happy and comes up swinging and... Looks to me like it's been evened up. Yeah, it looks like five on five here. Shots are 12 to three, Ottawa. I get worried about those hits from behind, and I know guys, they turn their back on the play, but you know, it's the responsibility of the person that's hitting, but also the responsibility of the player to, to brace and make sure that not put yourself in a bad spot. So Condra gets two for roughing and five for fighting. And they give Delorier two for boarding and five for fighting, and it's a wash. Not sure Delorier really fought there, but... No. Just defending himself. There, Condra. Puck's going to come around the boards, and yeah, he comes up swinging, gives him a good pop, and they drop the gloves and goes after it. He felt that... Delorier shouldn't have extended through the numbers, which is fair. And Delorier did land a right hand, so away you go. Well, I guess that's the definition of a fight. <laughs> have you been in one in the NHL? Did you fight anybody? I've been in a few altercations. <laughs> one where Jerome McGinley attacked Thomas Volkun, but I ended up looking like I was in a fight. <laughs> Morvieski shoots and Enroth kicks that away. I, I'm sorry to remind you that you are still suspended by the NHL, however. And deservedly so. It was <laughs> your a career, stupid, stupid move by me. Your career did end with the suspension. I, the league, I still owe the league four games, and they'll never get them back from me. No chance? No, I can barely touch my toes nowadays. The last of the stand-up goaltenders is going to retire in Nabokov. Here comes Stafford now trying to center it. That's knocked away. And Turris on it for Ottawa. Flips it up. Myers picks it up. Tyler Myers first on the scene as a 19-year-old with the Rookie of the Year. And then really struggled as that sharp angle shot skipped away by Leonard. To the point where he was a healthy scratch two years later at time. Now Turris centers it for McCarthy with a shot that goes wide. So sometimes it's a learning curve, Gord. Young guys get a lot on their plate and they have to live up to it. We're seeing that with Cody Cece right now who's a healthy scratch. He's had a nice season, but... Minus four last game, and Coach Dave Cameron giving him a night off just to take a step back and maybe reset his game a little bit. And sometimes a, a young player needs that. And Eric Grabber raises back. He felt the sting of the healthy scratch earlier this year. So did, Eric, so did Jared Cowan, who's got it now. He was a healthy scratch in five straight back in October. Savannah Jazz been a healthy scratch this year. Leg one. Now here's Grabo to tease it up and shoot and skips off a stick and wide leg one. Races in to pick it up, but now Neal swings back. And that's a challenge when you have a team that struggles is there's candidates to be healthy scratched every night. And it's tough for a coach and which ones to choose. Prior to that Carlson goal, Ottawa's last 11 goals had come from 11 different players. Now Carlson back with it. Swings it back in front. Carlson still with it, shoots. Hit the back of Tory Mitchell with it. And Mitchell banks it off the boards, and Stewart lifts it out. Chris Stewart was part of the package that came to Buffalo in the Ryan Miller deal with St. Louis. Admired at some awful slumps this year. Now Carlson centers it, goes back to Mathot. 
Slaps it off the end board, looking for that trampoline bounce, doesn't get it. And now lift it up to center ice here, Stewart with it. Tries to choke up on a stick to knock that down, Mathot takes it away. Kajo. Couldn't knock it out, Sabres keep it alive. Winding his Ennis with a shot, Leonard makes the stop, and the rebound drops down to Carlson. It's a good save by Robin Leonard, who hasn't been tested. That's the first tough shot he had to face, and makes a good save, positional save on Tyler Ennis. Now Felino up ahead for Stafford. Drew Stafford spins back, centers it, that shot right on by Weber. His glove by Leonard. 1-0 Ottawa leads on Eric Carlson's 13th goal of the year. Back here in Buffalo, Thursday night, the Senators will play host to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Our coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 8.30 Atlantic time on TSN 5. Pittsburgh's kind of a funny team to figure, Jamie. Yeah. Well, they've had some ups and downs, but got some star players on there you always have to respect. Of course, a new coach this season, and Mike Johnston. He's got him and Jim Rutherford. He's done a really nice job you know, implementing a different system. And, you know, they've, they've had some real challenges with injuries as well. Worked in and fired wide there by Nikita Zadorov, number 51. Now Reese Alinen fires it up the other side. So you got Zadorov and Reese Alinen up there together. Comes Gianta now, shoots, Leonard makes a pad save, the rebound skipped away from Molson. And it's picked up by Stone, lifts it high in the air, back up to center ice is Myers. Ranges back to pick it up. Tyler Myers, 6'8", 220 pounds. We've got a, a real big back end, you talked about Tyler Myers, but Zadorov is a large man. Ristolainen, tall, Strachan, Weber, I mean, that's some meat on the back end. The problem is mobility. Some of them have to work on their foot speed and closing plays. It's such a, a skilled, fast game to the neutral zone, and you've got to be quick to close off pucks. And skating, not an issue for that man. Tyler Myers is one no. of the best skating big men you'll find. Absolutely. Real nimble feet for a giant man. In comes MacArthur now. Spins it back for Grava. Grava turns and shoots, put it wide. And jumping up is Cowan. Leaves it there for Zibanejad. He's got time and shoots. And then it McCulloch, who was sprawled in front. Now Grava spins and shoots again, knocked away by Georges. Savannah Jad skated by the puck and scooped up by Stewart. He's got Ennis with him. Considering pass for Ennis, saw him bumped off the puck by Cowan. It's good work by Cowan to close off Ennis. Ennis was looking for a lane to try and jump to the middle, and Cowan ends up sealing off that lane, and puck ends up trickling behind the net. Leg one in, shoots, it goes off a stick and wide. Leg one back on it. And played up by Mazaros. Racing back is Carlson to pick it up. Hoffman. That bump there is Flynn spins and shoots. And Leonard makes the stop and hangs on. 1-10 to go in the first period. Well, that's the eighth shot on goal for Robin Leonard as Buffalo has picked up the pace as of late. And you know, the challenge for a young goaltender, I always talk about this, is to learn how to play every night. You know, we're seeing some young goaltenders try and stabilize as starters in the in the National Hockey League, and I think it's so underrated a goaltender that can play 65 games and, and call on that physically and mentally, and that's a challenge for Robin Leonard because his game sometimes is up and down, and that consistency factor isn't there. Now Myers trips the linesman there. Georges goes back to the spot. Final minute now of the first period. Ottawa the one nothing lead and a power play goal by Eric Carlson. He's now got 13 goals on the year. At the line is Mathad who holds it. Flips it across for Turris. Turris down to Stone. Turris loose in the corner. Looks down for Lazar. Shielding off the check of Georges. And Lazar plays it down to Stone again. Now racing in is Turris. Gets loose to behind the Buffalo goal. Works back in front and shoots. Enroth makes the save on the short side. And Gianta bats that to the line and gets enough to knock it out from Olsen. 
Some good work by Kyle Turris to take some ice for himself and jam away. Jonas Enroth does a real good job of sealing that post as Turris tries to elevate it short side. Turris trying to find McConnell for that pass. And Zadora with a long shot at the high and wide. As the Ottawa Senators will go to the dressing room with a 1-0 lean after one period of play. Eric Carlson with the goal. Brought to you by Metro Ottawa Ford dealers. Eric Carlson with the power play goal as Ottawa ends an 0 for 13 drought of the man advantage. Out shoots Buffalo 14 to 8 in that first period. The Sabres went seven and a half minutes without a shot back here with Jamie McLennan, but the shot attempts even more decisive, Jamie, 35 to 12 in favor of the Ottawa Senators. Yeah, the Senators working the Buffalo Sabres in their own zone, and you've got to find a way, though, to find the back of the net. It's only one nothing for the Senators, and execution is the word that Coach Dave Cameron keeps talking about, being sharp. It's great that you spend a lot of zone time and, and direct pucks towards the net, but it's about beating Jonas Enroth, traffic, second shots, generating that, and you have to hit the net. Missed shots, they had nine missed shots, so you've got to find a way to convert those type of opportunities and really put this game out of hand if you're the Ottawa Senators. That'll be the challenge for them in this period. Of course, Ottawa's had struggles this year, winning when scoring the first goal. In fact, Ottawa has the worst winning percentage in the league this year when scoring first. It's a weird stat, but it's it's unfortunate. I mean, it shows that they, they don't mind playing from behind, but they come back to bite you very quickly. Teams begin this second period, five on five. Deloria and Condra still in the penalty box serving their fighting majors. And now Carlson. Lost the puck, Gionta battles for it, and a shot wired wide by Myers, who shakes his head as he just missed there. He didn't miss by much. He had the top blocker. It just went a half a foot wide as it was a juicy rebound in front of Robin Leonard. He was unable to corral it. Now Georges winds and fires right on. Leonard steers that away. Robin Leonard's save percentage has dropped to 34th among eligible goaltenders this year. He's played more minutes lately, Gord, too. It's, that's a challenge for him. Now, Gergensen's works in on Lazar. And Gergensen's wins that battle for the puck. Plays it back for Zadorov. Reese to line it. Back for Gergensen to drive, and the glove save. Made in sight by Leonard. Now Stewart is jouncing there with Griba. A little dust up in front. Good work here by Robin Leonard. Puck's gonna go back through the seam and go down towards the net. He tracks it the whole way with bodies in front. Chris Stewart's a big body, he tries to interfere with him a little bit. Griba tries to push, it down, push him out. Earlier, Tyler Myers has an opportunity. The puck goes down towards the net, and he ends up missing the net. You see Robin Leonard make that glove save. That's good work by him to have no second opportunity as Buffalo's had a nice quick start to this period. Off the drop, picked up by Neal, ahead for Condra. And Eric Condra in across the line. Neal stayed on side. And Jurgensen collides there with leg one at center ice and sweeps the puck down to the Ottawa zone. Shoveled ahead for Neal. He's got Condra jumping in, and Neal ran headlong in the reach the line. And now Zadorov lost the puck. Jumping up with Borbieski to keep it alive, and the return pass from Condra missed, and Weirkosh has to hustle back. Patrick Weirkosh is a real good puck-moving defenseman. He needs to have a little bit more consistency in his game, though, as far as you know, advancing the puck and making the simple play. Sometimes it gets a little bit out of his element where he tries to force a play and it gets picked off. He'd be a little bit more irritable, too. He's a big-framed guy. And you want to create some space for yourself. I'm not saying drop the gloves or do anything other than, you know, claim the space on the ice. Be physical. Make sure you fight for every inch. And, and you establish that type of reputation. And it creates more space for yourself to make plays. Now Turris had that skip away at center ice. And it's fired in by Flynn. Back goes Borbieski for it. And Lazar battles with Felino. Borbieski flips that in the corner. Stone on it. Stone's up bottle up. 
Slides it back across for Borbieski. Turris. That's slammed down by Stafford, who caught him off balance. And now Weber plays it ahead for Flynn. Drops it back to Stafford. Here's Stafford with two goals in his last four games for Buffalo. And now Turris with it. Kyle Turris it across the line. Lost the puck to Weber. And now Georges plays it back across. Looked in by Stafford. The shot's now 14-11 Ottawa's. Buffalo has closed the gap somewhat in the late first and early second period. That's the challenge. You can't go to sleep on a team like this because all of a sudden they'll get a moldy goal and they're right back into the game. A moldy goal, do they? <laughs> you feel a cheap one, whatever, a favorable bounce, something like that. Well, Carlson shoots, that's kicked away by Georges. And Hoffman picks it up, Mike Hoffman. Centers it, and Pajo looking for the pass, got drilled in front by Georges. Back to the way comes Coletta, shoots, Leonard makes the save up high, tapped on goal by Gloria, still loose. Leonard down, Coletta shoots, and somehow Robin Leonard keeps that out of the net. This ends up being a garage sale. Coletta puts it towards the net, and Robin Leonard gets a glove on it, but he doesn't get all of it. Now it pops out. He needs to try and find it and track it. Bodies in front, dives across, and with the outside of his blocker, makes a terrific save here. You see again, Robin can't track it, goes between the legs of Eric Carlson. Coletta comes all the way around the net and has a wide open net and can't convert, but. That's good work by Robin Leonard identifying that there's a lane wide open, using that big six foot five body to outstretch and make a block or save on the play. Off the draw, Myers shoots, Leonard the save with the rebound skipped away from Molson. Matt Molson lays it back in the corner for Mitchell. Tory Mitchell jams it in front, Leonard down. And flying through the crease was Gianta, but Robin Leonard holds his ground. This is real good work here by Leonard on the post. Gianta, Mitchell try and jam hard on that post and try and get him to come right off. Little cycle play, stop up by Mitchell. He gets inside position on Jared Cowan and just tries to jam away. And, and you can see Robin Leonard hold his position, good leg strength to keep that puck out. Concert, eight nothing Sabres here in the second period. Sleepy start here for the Senators. They've got to find a way to get some momentum back as Buffalo's really turned up the pace early on in the second period here. If you're just joining us, Bobby Ryan of the Ottawa lineup tonight, a late scratch. And Gianna tapped that wide. Ryan came up limping in the morning skate today, tried the warm up, but couldn't go tonight. And so Jean Gabriel Pajot, who was supposed to be a healthy scratch on Saturday, but got in when. Well, Adam McCulloch came up sick, was supposed to be a healthy scratch again tonight, but draws back in with Bobby Ryan out. So how many times does the light turn green for you? Well, he's got to find a way to, to stay in that lineup through his play and not through default. Now, Reese the lineup works it back in. He shot deflected away to Condra. Up ahead for leg one, across for Neal. Chris Neal in, shoots, the pinball's off the leg and wide. And Condra collides there with Neal, scooped up by Ennis. Shovels up in the air for Stewart. Gloved down by Stewart, busting in. Chris Stewart centers it. Shot right on. And Zadorov got all of that. And Robin Leonard able to hang on. Zadorov can really shoot it. He's got a heavy shot. This is a terrific save by Robin Leonard. But what a neutral zone play here by Tyler Ennis. We've seen that a couple times. A little alley oop. Stewart driving the net, pulls up and finds Zadorov late on the play. Condra tries to close that play, but it's. Robin Leonard is able to close the wickets and control the rebound. Tyler Ennis with a nifty play in the neutral zone that helps create that play. And again, the Buffalo Sabres continue to push here in the second period, and Robin Leonard has the answer. Now Foligno battles for it. His centering pass was knocked away. Dribbles back in the corner for Stafford. Stafford back at the point. Weber a long shot. Leonard saw that in the last second and went high. And now Weirkosh races to it. 10 0 the shot Buffalo here in the period. Weirkosh got slammed down by Felino. That was a big collision, and Mark Borvietsky comes up to Felino and has a conversation with him, trying to draw him into a, a tilt. 
Back come the Sabres the other way. The centering pass for Stafford just missed. Now Stafford back with it. Has a look back in front for Ennis with a shot saved by Leonard. Off balance, got a piece of that. And now Lazar has it back the other way for Ottawa. And Lazar chips that down to the Buffalo zone. Keep talking about a sleepy start here for the Senators. That almost played down to what Buffalo standard was in the first period. And we've seen a role reversal as Buffalo has really pushed the pace up and thrown everything towards the net. Robin Leonard's had the answer. Now Hoffman races to it. Back at the point. George is a shot that deflected right on. Leonard the save with a sharp angle rebound put wide by DeLaurier. Myers steps up, shoots, and a glove save made by Robin Leonard. Buffalo all over Ottawa. Shots are 12 0 here in the second. And a big shot there as well. And Robin Leonard, a big part of the story here in the second period, as the Sabres have outshot Ottawa 13 0 in the middle period. I mean, six and a half minutes into the period, he's been a busy man. And here's Myers, back at the point, drops it back, and it's on the goal line and kept out. <laughs> Somehow that shot from Matt Molson got through but not in and pulled off the goal line by Milan McCulloch. <laughs> and you see Robin Leonard give McCulloch a high five there as He's able to reach in and pull this off the goal line. It's a nice little play, set play at the point. Pop down low. Now there's a clear lane to the net. Leonard gets enough of it that it ends up on the far post. Oh. Far post. But McCulloch, smooth hands. He doesn't panic on the play and ends up dragging it right off the goal line. You see a lot of players that end up knocking it in their own net because they panic. They think they don't have enough time. McCulloch ends up dragging it right off the line. And saving a goal. Unreal play there by Milan McCall. They just saw the replay on the video board here in Buffalo. No, no goal. There's a dirty pair of words here in Western New York. <laughs> Going back 15 years or so. Yeah. There's George's fires it wide. That's twice we've seen a goal save in the goal line in this game. It was Myers in the first period. And now McCulloch in the second. Goaltending getting a, a lot of help from their D. And, you know, that goes back to, I think, the frustration from maybe coach Dave Cameron to Robin Leonard last game about showing up his teammates a little bit. You get a lot of help from your teammates and here's the situation. It's sitting there. <laughs> Nothing but time but McCulloch with a little backhand play to drag it off the line and protect it. That's just terrific work and he's watching his work on the Jumbotron right now. Saw the Chicago Arizona game last night in overtime a shot by Andrew Shaw was right on the goal line. In fact it was almost all the way across. Yep. Mike Smith pulled it off the line. But that was millimeters away from going in last. They had a long review in OT in that game last night. In comes Leguan across for Neal. Neal shoots. And then Roth knocks that away. The centering attempt for Leguan knocked away. And back comes Ennis through the middle. He finds Gergensen. Edmund Gergensen batting there with Cowan, wins the race for the puck, feeds back to the point, but the pass is too hot for Mazzaro to handle. So 15 to 1 now, Jamie, the shots for Buffalo here in the second. Lord, you were talking about pieces to build around. Gergensen's is one of them as well. He's a terrific player and has a lot of upside skill-wise. At 20 years old, he's going to get better and better with experience. Now Stewart with the steal, shoots, it goes off a skate and wide. Over the head of Weber it goes and back down to the Buffalo zone. That'll be an icing call against Ottawa with 11.55 to go in the second. Well, this, the pace of the game right now for the Ottawa Senators is so slow. They're, it's almost like they're thinking instead of reacting out there. And that's a challenge. We see Gergensen, he had a nice move in the offensive zone to try and get the puck towards the net. But you know, Chris Neal gets his pocket picked. And, and they're not moving their feet. They're not generating any speed through the neutral zone. And that's why Buffalo is able to hem them in their own zone. Their decision making has been too slow in this period. And it's going to cost them. Off the face off when Grima flips it down. And Riesland goes back. And again, that'll be icing against Ottawa. Mark Stone's a, a player that's had a real nice season. Up and down your lineup. You know, he's wanted to stabilize and, and, and really show what he's capable of. You know, is he a top six guy that, that plays every night, eats up minutes? Is he going to slide down into a top nine role? be interesting to see what it, 
his career ceiling is with the Senators. Sidorov couldn't hold the line there. That allows Ottawa to begin the change after the back-to-back -back icing calls. And now Leonard settles things down, and this will allow Ottawa to change as he holds on. Chris Neal was skating to the bench, and he had the wooden legs going because they get trapped out after a couple icing plays. And Robin Leonard with a real smart play there just to get the icing, get the wholesale change, let the team regroup a little bit. And looking over at Coach Dave Cameron, he has not been happy with his group so far in this period, being outshot 15 to 1, being dominated by the 30th place team in the National Hockey League, and find a way to get some spark back into their game. Brings it around. At the point has reached the line. Oh. Down from Olsen. Now Matt Molson gets loose, tries to jam at the side of the goal, knocked away by Carlson. For sharp angle. Gianta shoots, kicked away by Leonard. Stone has a look. Finds Lazar, three on one Ottawa. Lazar to Carlson. Carlson in a little head fake and his pass was broken up on a great defensive play there by Zadorov as Carlson tried to go back to Lazar. Now Molson taps it in. And Stone loses it up for Carlson, who got bumped down by Gianta. Gordon, you've got a three on one. You've got to find a way to get the puck to the net. You've only had one shot in this period. You know Carlson's a real creative player and tries to look off and, and create a seam play. But again, when you haven't had any attempts towards the net, Enroth's been down there collecting dust. You've got to find a way to shoot and maybe even create a rebound if you're not going to score on the initial rock. By the way, the way things have gone this year, Enroff not complaining. No, not at all. Shoots and Leonard steers that to the corner. Now loose behind the goal. Here's Coletta trying to shovel that back in front. Warbieski stepped into him. And in behind the play, Coletta and Warbieski collide, and Coletta slow to get to his feet. He's looking for blood as he skates off. Certainly in a little distress. Coletta's going for some medical attention. And she has all picked it up for Ottawa. To Pajo. That pass misfires for Hoffman. Weber plays it across. And Gergensen tries to chip that up. Now Ennis with it. It bounced in behind him. Pajo. For she is home. And he couldn't find Hoffman. Centering pass by Stewart goes off a skate. Jurgensen's got dumped in front by Borbianski. Crowd didn't like that very much. Now the ring line pass for Shea saw is broken up. And Myers headmans the puck for Buffalo. In comes Tyler Myers now. Loose down low. Myers still with it. Backhands that for Flynn with a quick shot. Leonard makes the pad save. And we're guys back with it. And he goes for Hoffman in across the line. Hoffman finds Pajo trying to center for Shiasong. Couldn't find him. Now Shiasong wraps it around with Stafford waiting there for Buffalo. George, you talked about Tyler Myers skating. And that last sequence is a perfect example. He's such a great skater and protects the pocket. It'll be interesting to see if his game can turn around, whether he's traded or not, as he gets, gains more confidence in his play because... You know, he doesn't play his size the way he skates and handles the puck, but you know, consistency certainly is a challenge for him. Sometimes when you talk to people out of Buffalo, they say he wants to do too much. He wants to be a difference maker, and that's not a bad trait to have as a player, but you also have to work within your limitations and work with your line mates, and, and it's certainly been a challenge for him in Buffalo, but I think that's why scouts are continually licking their chops over a player like that to see the potential. If he had a real good partner to play with, somebody would bring him along. I think the sky's the limit for a player like that because he's got all the tools. Confidence was a real issue for Myers for a long time here. He and Coach Lindy Ruff had their differences at times. Well, coaches always are hard sometimes on young players with upside. Just try and get more out of them, but there's a fine line with that because you can destroy a young player's confidence if it goes too far. Turris off the faceoff, back for Lazaro. Sharp angle shot, Enroth makes the save. 25-15 now, the shots in favor of Buffalo. 17-1 in the period. And this can't be making anyone in the Ottawa bench or the executive suite happy. Not at all, unless you're 
looking to match this team's draft status. 17-2 shot for the team that is struggling as bad as Buffalo. That's There's no way to sugarcoat that in a period. It's just been a poor period here by the Ottawa Senators. Myers gains center ice and fires it down. Eight to go in the second. Carlson has the Ottawa goal and six in his last ten games. Up ahead for Turris. In comes Turris with a shot. It goes off a stick off the end boards. Right back to Turris. Trying to find McCullough. He wraps it around and Zadorov races to it. Give it Zadorov just the latest defenseman to come out of the London Knights blue line factory. As Dale and until recently Mark Hunter on a tremendous program there. Mark Hunter, of course, has left the Knights and gone to the Toronto Maple Leafs of the NHL as that pass skips over the stick of drive on out. Well, and the Maple Leafs are hoping that Mark Hunter can bring some of that you know, savvy, savviness when it comes to finding players to their organization as they've been struggling in the draft and obviously their coverage are bare as far as prospects. There's a couple of them, but not too many. Now Borbietsky knocks that down. Ellis hopping off the bench, trying to center it for Molson. Loose puck, and Molson couldn't reach it as Borbietsky banks it out. Now Weber goes back. And icing waved off as Condra was bearing in on him. Neal. Swept it back in the corner, misses Condra with that. 6.45 to go in the second period. Neal fires it back in. Ottawa looking to start a change. And now Mazaros is back for it. It's been such a sloppy period for the Senators. Turnovers in the neutral zone being hemmed in their own zone. In comes Condra. Perpagio works it and shoots. Enroth makes the stop. Shiasson takes a late poke at it. But Jonas Enroth hangs on. And at center ice, Borvietsky is scurrying off with Coletta. So that long, simmering conversation bubbles over. As they trade punches 80 feet from where the puck was. Right, and look at that. Fire up the crowd. He waves his arms in the air and Borbietsky heads off. Didn't like the Borbietsky hit from earlier. 1-0 the Senators lead in the second period here in Buffalo. Patrick Coletta was not happy with an altercation earlier with Mark Borbietsky. Borbietsky plays it out, gets a stick underneath the chin of Coletta. Coletta ends up dropping, heading off the ice. His neck shift out, went right to center ice and had a conversation with him. And they end up dropping the gloves. Borbietsky has got his gloves off and throwing before Coletta ends up engaging. So Borbietsky is going to get the extra. Now the shot tipped right on. Leonard makes the stop on the deflection by Stewart. This is a great save here by Robin Leonard. That high tip made famous by the Sedin brothers in Vancouver. It's such a different dynamic for a goaltender to try and defend. Myers throws it over. Nice little tip in that high slot by Stewart. Goes between the legs of Jared Cowan and Robin Leonard in terrific position to make the save and corral the rebound. So an extra two minutes for roughing goes to Borbietsky. It's not an instigator penalty, so he gets two and five. And Coletta just gets five. Coletta was going for the conversation, and Borbietsky was already ready for it. In comes Gergensen's now. Brings it around for Stewart. A lot of talk last year that Ottawa was interested in getting Chris Stewart from St. Louis before he was involved in that Ryan Miller trade. And a miserable start to the season for Stewart. Who scored once in his first 21 games this season. He's one of those guys that leaves you wanting more because he's got all the tools, but again, consistency plagues him. In comes Stone now, busting in short-handed. And reaching back was Molson to take that away from him. Buffalo has allowed a league leading eight short-handed goals this year. As Grava slaps it across for Condra. Now Condra winds it and shoots and just missed high. 18 to 3 now Buffalo here in the period. McCulloch picks up that clearing attempt from Myers. Condra, rink wide for drive, but in shoots, trying to find the stick of McCulloch on the tip. That just missed. And on the thought, Barry's Flynn in front of the Buffalo bench. That's a massive collision there. Flynn had his head down trying to track it off the boards, and Mathot waiting for him just buries him. 
Something wrong with Tyler Myers here. He's very slowly making his way to the Buffalo bench after falling in the Buffalo defensive zone. We hope that he's all right. Obviously, he's been one of the pillars on the blue line for the Buffalo Sabres, and then depending on if they want to move that asset at the deadline, they never want a guy to be injured. One shot on goal for Buffalo on that power play as Neal steps out after serving the penalty. And Lazar picks it up. 4.15 to go in the second period. Ottawa continues to lead 1-0 on the goal by this man, Eric Carlson. In comes Carlson. Centers it. It goes right down on goal. Enroth knocks it away as Torres couldn't get a stick on it. Back comes Ellis. Game center ice and slaps it back down to the Ottawa zone. Now he's back in action Thursday night against the Pittsburgh Penguins. who will play Detroit tomorrow night. And here's Weber with a shot. Score! Mike Weber takes a centering pass and they're saying no goal. We're going to call goalie interference here on the Sabres and Marcus Foligno is going to lose it. <laughs> well, Greg Kimberly was right in position and he waved it off immediately. Marcus Foligno was in Robin Leonard's crease. It's good work behind the net. And you can see Foligno backing into Leonard. Leonard waving his arm saying he couldn't take any ice. Now Carlson pushes him in, but then skates away from that. Mathot tries to box out. Weber believes he has a goal short side. Ted Nolan not happy about it. These, are, these gray area calls, I'm, I know I'm a former goaltender and people always say I lean towards the side of the goaltender, but he has to be able to take some ice, but it didn't look to me like Felina was really engaging Leonard. It looked to me like he was just in the crease now. Challenges is Kimberly sees a different angle, waves it off immediately. And again, the dreaded no goal is heard. <laughs> Carlson. Up ahead for McCulloch, that plays offside at the Buffalo line. And 18 to 4 are the shots here in the second period. The score remains 1-0. The Sabres and their fans think it should be 1-1. Marcus Foligno believes that he did not interp interfere with Robin Leonard on the play. He's going to try and take some position. Mark Mathot comes across to try and box him out. Puck goes back to Weber. He goes short side, but Robin Leonard unable to take ice for himself because of Polino in his crease, and it's deemed no goal. And in between the break here, Coach Ted Nolan had some choice words for Greg Kimmerly, the, the ref who made the call. And your verdict is? I think it's no goal. I think it's the right call. Now McCulloch shatters a quick shot of the goal post by MacArthur. Clark MacArthur hits the fight. And narrowly missed, making it 2-0. MacArthur, goalless in his last nine. And now a centering pass for Stewart, who jams at that. And Leonard shuts it down on the short side. Under three to go here in the second period. Now a wraparound try by Stewart, knocked away by Carlson. And Eric Carlson quickly away. Side steps Weber and fires it down as MacArthur collides there with Mazzaro. So the penalty coming to MacArthur. They're going to call him for the hold, and Buffalo is going to get a late power play here in the second period. Lark MacArthur is going to get a holding penalty, and he's frustrated with the play because had he scored on his opportunity, we'd have been back at center ice. And here's the hold on Mazzaro. Mazzaro engages him physically, but. Clearly, there's a hold involved in this, and good entry into the zone. The Benajad drives the net. That creates the lane. Myers tries to take away the lower part of the net, and MacArthur ends up wiring it off the post as he beats Enron to the top glove, but can't find the back of the net. Now he'll serve two or less. Off the face off, the puck gets away from Zadorov and back down the ice. Reese to line it. Up ahead for Felino. That's knocked away from him. Grava plays it back down. Or their power play, the Buffalo Sabres power play entries have been dreadful. And they've got to find a way to have sustained pressure and at least get set up so that you can move that puck around. 
They had one chance last power play on the high tip but by Stewart, but that was off of a, a one draw. They have a real poor setup. They don't come up the ice together. It's almost like they're just looking to try and take advantage of just having an extra guy out there. There's no plan in place and as they put themselves offside here. Got to find a way to change up the personnel and get some sustained pressure. That's just a, a real poor executed power play by the Buffalo Sabres. Just 17 power play goals on the year, Jamie, for Buffalo. They've allowed eight shorthanded, so their power play isn't adding much to the equation. Well, they, the Senators had two or three chances last power play. Eric Condra, who's underrated, and well, we haven't mentioned his contract status. Is, Ottawa Senators have to take a, a look at him and what they're going to do with him in the future. He would be a, a real nice piece as far as an addition to a team that looking for depth heading into the playoffs. He's a nice player that I think does a lot of good things that are underrated. Don't can't clear it up. Carlson on it. Leguan tries to poke it ahead, but here's Stewart. Dropping it around for Myers. Jurgensen down low to Stewart. Banks it back for Molson, who plays the point in the power play. Now across to Myers. In, wide, shoot, under the save. And the rebound bounces down to Leguan. And Leguan gets that off the stick of Ennis and just out. 25 seconds to go on the McCarthy penalty. Now Stone spins and fires it down. We're in the final minute of this second period. The shots are 20 to 4 for Buffalo. But if you're the Sens, you just got to find a way to get out of this period and regroup because Robin Leonard's been the story for sure. Long shot, fired wide. As the door off just missed, the McCarthy's back on the ice. At the point, Stafford shoots, said Leonard makes the stop. Stafford gets a good look at the net as the penalty expires. And Robin Leonard does a good job of taking the shot, controlling the rebound. That's the 21st shot of the period for the Buffalo Sabres. That they've been all over the Senators. And Robin Leonard's the only reason why. It got a little help from McCulloch on the goal line. But other than that, a one nothing game still for the Senators. The only reason is Robin Leonard. From the point that shot by Zadorov hit a leg. Now Mitchell trying to pick it up. And here's Gianta. Centers it, but it's knocked away by MacArthur and back up to center ice for McCollum. And Zadorov back for it in the final seconds. And Ottawa will continue to lead 1-0 after two periods of play, despite being outshot 21-4 in the second period. Our second mission is coming up. You're watching Canadian Tire Senators Hockey. On TS Summaries brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Buffalo out shoots Ottawa 21 to 4 in that period, but does not score at a goal waved off from Mike Weber. And so Robin Leonard in a very similar situation to the one he was in on Saturday. Has not allowed a goal through two. None of the shot attempts. Ottawa still with the edge, but now comes the test, Jamie. Yeah, it's a challenge mentally for him, but you're also, if you're a goaltender, you're looking for a response for your team. Robin Leonard did everything he did in that second period. Now the Ottawa Senators have to give him a little bit of breathing room and, and really push the pace up here as they, they took the second period off and allowed their goaltender to, to, to keep them afloat. Six consecutive start for Leonard as Myers is back to pick it up. And we talked about Tyler Myers in the second intermission. But four years to go on a contract, an average annual value of Five and a half million, but the money declines. It's five next year, then four, then three and a half, then three. So he's actually going to make less in cash than his cap value, which makes him even more attractive. And Gordy's only 24 years old. I mean, everyone's raving about Evander Kane being available, a high-end prospect. That, you know, can you turn Evander Kane into, you know, that next level elite player? Defensemen take longer to mature. Tyler Myers being 24 years old, six foot eight, can skate like that. And, and handle the puck with a big shot and that cap hit. He's very attractive for a lot of teams that are looking for that type of dynamic and to play in your top four for sure. The Buffalo's not going to give him away. No, no, not at all. You're dealing from a position of strength if you're the Buffalo Sabres because you have a plan in place already. Now Turris with a steal for Ottawa. Beals back in the corner. 
Tried to drop that back with the pass, missed Stone. Here's Carlson back with it. Knocked overall a 30 to 18 Buffalo. Stone chips it in. Gergensen. Up for Stewart, tried to chip it out. Now in the corner, Weber. It's just hog tying an Ottawa player. And still not letting him up. It's Turris. Weber's lost his helmet and he's over top of Turris. They were tied up and, and referee Dan O'Halloran standing there. And as of now, no penalty being indicated. Was supervising the situation, Dan O'Halloran was, but <laughs> Weber gets tied up with him and, and Turris doesn't let go. Like he's given up a lot of size and strength to Mike Weber, but you have to give him full marks. They go down, he gives him a little headlock, Turris. And, Rips the helmet off. Now Weber's not loving it. Gives him a left and a little cross check, a little love. And like I say, Dan O'Halloran just leaning on the boards like he's watching it on TV. Well, I guess there's no real no, there's no, there. no shots, and no punches or anything. It's just kind of a, a roughing up, but both of them could have gone. Now it's center ice. The pass goes off the skate of Condra. And Stafford drops it back. You know, the assumption is that Buffalo, of course, will get the very high draft pick this year, and that'll likely happen, but assuming that that will lead to success can be a mistake. Take a look at Edmonton. You know, Atlanta for years. There's Tim Murray, the general manager of the Sabres, of course, the former assistant GM of the Ottawa Senators, the nephew of Ottawa GM Brian Murray. And Tim Murray made a name for himself as an exceptional scout. That's what, that's what you need in today's game, Gord, is somebody who has an eye for talent at that young level. Great job in Florida, then Anaheim, where he really made his mark on the New York Rangers, and then Ottawa. Chris Neal and Marcus Foligno having a little joust here for position at the, the neutral zone faceoff. So if you're looking for the blueprint, it's yes, high first round picks, then it's success in a later round. Absolutely. Chicago has nine regulars that drafted after the first round. There's a chance in front for leg one with a shot, and then Ross turns out away. L.A. most nights has eight players picked after the first round in this lineup. Detroit is a very high number as well. Boston gets players like Bergeron, Marchand, Lucic, Krejci. That's where success comes. You get the star players, but then the support cast comes when you draft them later round. And Gord, it's patience too, not forcing them into the lineup when they're not ready to play. That's a challenge. When you have a, an organization with depth, I always point to the Detroit Red Wings, where they allow their prospects to, to almost overgrow in Grand Rapids because you've got players that are in the NHL that have to be pushed out. You see Tatar and Nyquist and some of these young prospects can step right in and make impact because they, you allow them to grow and play in the minors. Anthony Mantha playing down in Grand Rapids now in his first year of pro. And now Ellis fires it around. So by contrast, there were points last year, this, or this season rather, where Edmonton's had one, Jeff Petrie, the only player in their lineup drafted after the second round on a lot of nights. And, and Edmonton's drafting history has not been very sharp. And led to a, the lack of depth and success there. Now Hoffman winds and fires. He gets that hard shot away that Enros steers away. And now advantage at centers it. McCulloch puts it wide. And for Jonas Enros, this is just watching the same movie over and over and over again. His team just does not score. Corey Mitchell works it in. Down for Mazzaro. And MacArthur picks it up. Up ahead for advantage at. Sabres scoring just 1.6 goals a game when Enroff is in goal. That's terrible goal support for a goaltender. He's had a real nice season as well. But again, it's, it's a mental challenge. And it's not like the Sabres haven't had their opportunities. Robin Leonard's been terrific, but you've got to find a way. As I talked about, whether whatever word you want to use, if it's moldy or just you know a greasy goal, that's the one that you have to guard against if you're the Ottawa Senators, where 
You get out of a period, and then one hits a skater, slides in off the shin pad. Now a penalty coming to Ottawa as Griba got an elbow up. And so the extra skater comes on for the Sabres, but Ottawa touches up. It'll be Griba called for the elbow. And so Buffalo will get an early power play here in the third period. Eric Griba, you say, gets the elbow up and going to head off for two or less. Right. Yep. Yep. Little forearm reaching in. Bouncing puck. Wants to stop Gergensen from getting a lane towards the net. Forearm shiver, wherever you want to call it. It's still a, a shot to the head that's called. And Senators have a challenge here to kill off this power play. Off the faceoff, win Borbietsky to the line, but not out. Held by Myers. And now the Sens do move it out. You think Myers is worth a gamble? Absolutely. I, I, I've seen a lot of young defensemen get written off, and then they end up being very solid. It, again, expectations were so high on him after you win the Calder and you're, you have that success early on. You expect him to be in the Norris conversation every year. What if he's just a really good defenseman? In comes Stewart, drops it down for Ennis. Back for Stewart. He watched there by Condra. Back at the point is Molson. And Matt Molson will slap pass off the inboard. Stewart shovels it in front. Loose puck. Kurgensons couldn't get a shot away. Now Molson back with it. Back to the point to Myers. Little snapshot scores. Tyler Myers through the traffic. A power play goal ties the game and one. Seeing eye shot, finds the back of the net. Myers does a really good job of being patient at the blue line. Taking some ice for himself. It's going to come back to the point. Borbietsky can't get a handle on it. Bolson's going to slide it across. Now Myers is going to walk the line. He knows he has traffic in front. Stewart in the high slot. Gergensen down low. We're getting a good look from Robin Leonard has to see. He pushes to his left, can't get his body in front of it, and it just eludes him on that shoulder, left shoulder side inside the post. And the Buffalo Sabres have tied this game up early on in the third period. Mark Dobson, the chief pro scout for the Winnipeg Jets, is here tonight. A lot of talk that Myers could be in a package. Perhaps Winnipeg looking to make a larger deal. Talked earlier to Bob McKenzie mentioned an insider trading tonight on Sports Center that Buffalo is very interested in Evander Kane. Well, it'll be interesting. I, you know, you get to a situation when there's one trade, now there's a, a ton. It's like dominoes effect, and there's a lot of teams that are shopping prospects. And I would think, like you say, not only Evander Kane, but players out of the Toronto Maple Leafs organization are going to be moved, and teams are looking to pick. Pick the lower bottom feeder teams apart a little bit with pending unrestricted free agents and, and players that they want to move out and contracts you want to move. So Myler, Myers would certainly be an attractive piece to a lot of teams in the, in the league, not only just for, for right now, but for the future. But the price won't be cheap. No. That's a challenge. And Tim Murray can run the price up because he doesn't like what he sees. He keeps a 24-year-old. Who's under contract for four more years. Exactly. Now MacArthur with a steal, centers it in, Ross knocked out away, still loose, Savannah Jet banging at it. Here's Cowan now. Bangs it down to McCulloch. Lines across to MacArthur. To the point to Griva, he shot goes off the leg of Delorier. Now Griva fans of the shot, and away come the Sabres, Coletta, ahead for Delorier. And back goes Griva for it. A couple of times, and Grabba's had a hold of the stick here in the third period. And Grabba back for it. Yeah, you can tell he's frustrated. He takes that penalty that causes the goal, and then gets a one-timer opportunity and, and whips it. Now MacArthur turns it over. Gionta with a shot, and Leonard's got that. Tyler Myers has his fourth goal of the year. Player profile is brought to you by Asante, providing complete financial advice. Clark MacArthur, of course, began his pro career with the Buffalo Sabres. The 29-year-old was drafted back in 2003, the third round by the Sabres. Spent four years with the organization before moving on to Atlanta, then to Toronto. 
And on to Ottawa. MacArthur, of course, had a great year last year. Career high 24 goals in 79 games last season. You see the strengths there. Grit and a nose for the puck. Now Reese Delinen shoots that floats wide. A weird thing for MacArthur this year is that he has scored in back-to-back -back games five times. So 10 of his 13 goals have come in those back-to-back -back binges. He's also had some stretches where it's been real lean for him, and that's where he misses a guy like Bobby Ryan where he had some chemistry. Reese Delinen knocks down the thought at center ice. And now Molson chips it back down to the Ottawa zone. Sens have lost three in a row in regulation for the first time this year. In danger of missing the playoffs in back-to-back -back years for the first time since 95 and 96. And Carlson hammers that high and wide. He's got a stick in his feet and a penalty coming up out of Buffalo. And the Ottawa Senators will go on the power play as the holding call goes against the Sabres. What a great rush by Eric Carlson. That's what he's known for. He handles the puck so well, lets the puck do the work for him. He's going to gather it behind the net from Robin Leonard. Get on his horse. Now he's going to take some ice for himself. Let the puck work and now stop up. He's got such a, a wicked snapshot. Just goes over the net. It's Jonas Enroth. That's a, a real tough shot to track if you're Enroth. I talked about it before. He's only 5'10". And talking to goaltender coach Arthur Urbe for the Buffalo Sabres, he, he says 5'10 is a stretch. <laughs> Harris with the faceoff back to Carlson for Weirkosh. And Harris races to it. Georges goes high off the glass, and Weirkosh can't knock it down. A race for it now as Brian Flynn is rushing in. Buffalo hasn't scored shorthanded, by the way, against Ottawa since 2002 when Eric Rasmussen did it. Remember him? Oh, I remember. That's a blast from the past. Here's Weirkosh. Drops it off. In comes Stone with a drive. That rattles high off the glass. Back at the point held by Weirkosh. In for Turris. With Stone standing in front, and Weirkosh can't hold the line. Carlson had the power play goal in the first period. That was the first power play goal for the Senators against the Sabres in the last eight meetings. And the puck bounces down to Enroth. He'll hang on to that with McCulloch looking for the loose puck. Go back and take a look at the, the penalty on Eric Carlson. Gianta is going to reach in and lose his stick. That causes... Well, he's got a hold on... Right, he had to hold the forward coming yeah, back. We lost the stick in the neutral zone, but Carlson still gets a terrific <laughs> shot away with that stick in his feet the whole time. <laughs> Boy, drag, Curlin dragged it around the stick. Again, they win the faceoff back. Carlson finds Hoffman to MacArthur. Hoffman looks it across to Carlson, skips off his stick, and Stafford plays it up for Buffalo. Forty seconds to go in this Ottawa power play. Got Mike Hoffman playing the point with Eric Carlson. In the first rotation, it was weird caution. He's getting an opportunity for some power play points, and he had that cross ice pass that he stumbled and had to come out of the zone. And this is somebody, if he's going to get an opportunity on the power play, he has to be more efficient. The Senators have struggled on the power play, having that fourth forward back there handling the puck. And now Leonard has to play it away from Felino. By the way, she is out there in the Ottawa power play. Has played just 545 through the first two periods. One shot on goal for Ottawa on that power play as Gianta steps out. Trip down the center zone as Leguan races back to pick it up. Neal. Lost the puck. Gianta fired it back in. Delayed offside indicated. And that gives Ottawa time to bring it out. 32-21. The shots in favor of Buffalo. As Leguan centers it. Condra kicks it wide. It was 14-8 Ottawa after one, and Condra flips that wide to the goal. Twenty-four to seven of the shots on goal for Buffalo since the end of the first period. And the Senators have to find a way to get some sustained pressure. We're down to Condra. 
Back to Wiercott. Ottawa hasn't missed the playoffs in back-to-back -back years since 95 and 96. Now, Neil or Efron try, that's knocked away, but even with all those home games looming, the gap is getting greater and greater. In comes Pajot across the line. John Gabriel Pajot was shot, and Enroth is able to glove that. 9.21 to go in the third period. You're watching. 21 saves in the second period, giving them an opportunity. The only goal he allows is a seeing eye shot from the point on the power play. So they've got to find a way to, to respond for him. He's been outstanding in this game. By the way, also a healthy scratch tonight is Cody Hodson for the Sabres for the second consecutive game. He's had a disastrous season. Somebody He led their team in points last year. He can't find a home not only on the top two lines, he's been on the fourth line for a while. Hasn't scored in his last 22 games, has just eight points in 51 games this year. Lazar got spun around the corner. And he's got some term left on his deal. Four years, I think it's about four and a half million. He's another one of those players, Gore, that you, you want more from, but you're not sure what's there. Now Turris with a steal, winds in. Trying to find Lazar, and Lazar got tied up and thrown down by Mazaros. And now Grima tried to play it back in the corner, it's picked off. And moved down to the Ottawa zone by Zadorov. Gianto almost stole that puck away from Cowan in the corner. And McCulloch gets bumped there by Bolson. McCulloch stays on it. Zibana drops it back. Hoff with a shot that handcuffed in, Rob, but he got a piece of it. And now Mazaros wraps it off the boards and down the ice. Cowan goes back and icing waved off. It's a real good shot and release by Mike Hoffman and a terrific save by Enroth to pick that up at the last second. Now he swings it rink wide for McCulloch who drops it back for Weirtosh with a shot. Save Enroth, rebound, score! Milan McCulloch on the rebound gives Ottawa the lead again. Great work here by the Senators. Straight line hockey. McCulloch's going to get a rebound that comes off the pad of Enroth, but a little stretch play. Hoffman's going to kick it wide. Back through the middle, and McCulloch ends up driving the net, getting inside position. A juicy rebound comes off of Jonas Enroth. He's unable to corral that initial offering, and McCulloch ends up chipping it on that blocker side, and the Senators get up two to one on the 25th shot of the, the game for them, but that's terrific work there by the Senator. Straight line hockey, putting pucks towards the net, creating rebounds and second opportunities, and McCulloch finishes it off. Eighth goal of the year for McCulloch, six of them scored on the road. And the lead is restored as Borbieski goes back. Icing was waved off, he took a hard shot to the end boards. And now Condra has it back the other way for Ottawa. In comes Conroe's shot, it goes high off the glass. And Enroth leaves it there for Myers. I guess the question with the Myers situation, Jamie, would be by the time the Sabres are good, Myers' contract is probably up. Yeah, you have to pick a bigger picture, longer Now we got too many men on the ice for the Sabres. And so Ottawa is going back on the power play. That's the right call. It's always the challenge when the puck is rolling by the bench. The player jumps off and wants to handle it immediately. He has to be aware that the substitution has been legally made as Chris Stewart's going to serve the penalty. It's turned over by Pajot. He just throws it so, towards the bench. So he plays it before the man he's replacing has gone off. And yep. so often, I mean, Theoretically, Jamie, you can have 10 skaters on the ice as long as five are going off and five come on and no one touches the puck. It's, it's the touching of the puck. And you have to be aware that, again, the guy you're substituting for is off or clearly in that two feet zone. And Stewart wasn't anywhere near the bench when it was handled. And Sabres off to the, pit, off to the box. And Carlson now on the power play. Centering pass, but right down on goal, battling way for it is Stone, and Myers buried him right into the net. 
Just a stone is now pinned in the net by Enroth, and finally the Sabres clear it out. Kyle Turris yelling at referee Dan O'Halloran. He felt that stone was crushed into the net. And no penalty call. Chipped in now. They think Stone thought he touched it, but they're going to call this icing against Ottawa on the power play with 90 seconds to go on it. Get an opportunity. Kyle Turris has a chance as the puck's going to roll at the back door. Stone gets pushed in. Turris has a wide open net, but can't corral the puck and feels that he was hooked and tripped. Puck's going to hit Jonas Enroth. Two opportunities, and then Turris can't get the puck out to the front of the net. Stone was in. Yeah, he was in. Fully over the line. Second. Now Foligno taken down by Carlson. And Stone brings it out. Drops it back for Turris. Back at the point is Carlson. Across for Weirkosh. In shoot. That hit Weber and took a fight out of Mike Weber. Turris centers it. McCulloch drops it back for Weirkosh. Across to Carlson. With Stone standing in front. Carlson swings it back to Weirkosh. Off the end boards for Stone. And Stone had that chopped away. Back at the point. Weirkosh again. To Carlson. His pass off a stick to Turris. Turris centers it. McCulloch can't get a shot away. And Stone throws it back to the point to Weirkosh. 35 seconds to go on the Ottawa power play. Carlson fires. It goes off a stick and wide again. Turris back with it. Takes the return pass from McCulloch. Now back in front of McCulloch with the back door for Carlson just missed. Here's Turris. Rick wide to Carlson with time. Waits, walks in. Still waiting. Drops it back for Turris. He gets it back to the point. And Weirkosh can't hold the line. Good puck movement by the Senators, but unable to get a real good shot at Jonas Enroth. Maybe one extra pass that they could have put towards the net, but good patience by Carlson. Just can't find Turris on the back door. One shot on goal for Ottawa on that power play, and Hoffman knocks it wide. Now the centering pass for advantage has skipped away. And Carlson right back out for Hoffman for Shiasong. Stewart racing back the other way. Fine Dennis with that pass. He got stapled there by Griba. Stewart back on it. Centers a tip right on, and Leonard made a point blank save on Gergensen. Outstanding left pad save by Robin Leonard. 4.20 to go in the third period. Ottawa nursing a one goal lead. Centering pass for Ennis fires. And Leonard got just a piece of that to knock it over the glass and out. McCulloch's got the go-ahead goal here in the third period. 2-1, the Senators lead. Robin Leonard's going to make two terrific saves. One, a redirection by Gergensen's in front. He gets the left pad on it. And then Tyler Ennis is wide open, takes a little ice for himself. Curl and drag, and it just hits the crossbar over the glass. Good work. Now behind the Ottawa goal, MacArthur picks up the puck along the boards. Trying to find Leguan there. The wall was sealed by Myers. Mitchell picks it up for Buffalo. Torrey Mitchell tries to center it. Bounces back to Molson. His shot blocked by Leguan. And racing back is Georges to pick it up. David Leguan with good work to get into that lane. As Buffalo's trying to shrink the zone, force the pucks back to the point, and then get traffic in front of Robin Leonard. Leguan doesn't allow the puck to get down to the front of the net. Now Gianta back with it. Slaps it down in the Ottawa zone where Carlson is waiting for the Senators. Back in action Thursday night at home against the Pittsburgh Penguins. We'll have it for you here on TSN. As Carlson breaks it in, three on two for Turris. Turris trying to feather it back for Carlson. That pass is broken up by Mazaros. Lord, you mentioned you play the Pittsburgh Penguins on Thursday. You've got to have a, a way better effort against a team like that or they'll make you pay. Buffalo has one win this year in 27 games when trailing after two periods. It's been a miserable time for the Sabres and almost all of it can be traced to a lack of goal scoring. Now Flynn tries to drop that back.
Zadorov holds the line. And Zadorov has a look back. Giant, or Felina rather, had that knocked away. Now Mathot. Bumped by Drew Stafford. Stafford wins the battle for the puck. Taken down by Mathot. And a penalty coming to Ottawa. As Mathot took Stafford down. And Buffalo will go to the power play with 2.16 to go in the third period. Well, this will be a big kill for the Ottawa Senators. Mark Mathot pops the puck up. Now he's going to reach in and trip. Can open. He's going to yell that his stick got caught between the legs, but no arguing. The player goes down, and you'll have to see what Coach Ted Nolan's going to do as the, the minutes start to dwindle down if he's going to make that a, a six on four situation if he ends up pulling Jonas Enroth at any point during the kill. This is Buffalo's 55th game of the year. The Sabres entering tonight have been held to a goal or nothing in 26 of their first 54 games of the year. Yikes. Here's Myers on the power play. Looks down to Gergensen. Stewart got tied up there by Gorbietsky. You now Gergensen down to Stewart. Looks it back for Myers, who taps it back for Molson. Gergensen across for Ennis. Gergensen feeds Molson again. Back to Gergensen. Stewart getting loose at the side of the goal. Takes that hard pass from Gergensen. Ennis on the back door, but Stewart goes back and sends the point to Molson. Cross to Myers. Ennis centers it, and that missed the stick of Gergensen's, and Molson can't hold the line. Here comes Ottawa, short-handed Condra across the line. Tries to work his way in. Molson chips it up. Chance now for Buffalo back the other way. Pass missed Ennis. Cowan goes back, and that'll be an icing call against Buffalo. On the power play, 1.26 to go in the third period, and the faceoff back down to the Sabres' end. That's great work by Jared Cowan to get back. He's in a foot race with Tyler Ennis, and he ends up making that a, an icing play. Ennis has a, a step on him. Cowan gets inside position, and that's just really good work, knowing that this was, could have been a, an odd man situation because Condra got caught up Ice trying to make a play. Condor and Pajot. Buffalo was off to the races. It was a poor pass in the neutral zone that ended up with an icing. And now the Sabres call timeout. Not where they wanted to use it with the faceoff in their own end. No, not at all. That's the, the value of a of a good pass in the neutral zone that could lead Ennis. It's too far ahead of him. And again, can't stress enough that the work of Jarrett Cowan there. It's just a little thing, but it. If he loses that foot race, Buffalo gets sustained pressure potentially in the offensive zone, and we're not talking about them taking Buffalo taking their time out. Here is tonight's game story brought to you by Molson Canadian. Eric Carlson has his ninth goal against Buffalo, most against any team. Buffalo had shot on a 21 to 4 in the second period, but didn't score. Robin Leonard's got 33 stops so far tonight. Yeah. He's 5-1 this year when he faces 35 or more shots. He's one away from facing his 35th. Well, certainly, Robin Leonard has been the story for the Ottawa Senators. Bounce back game from the Columbus fiasco the other night, and he's done a real good job. Looked real poised in the net. Faceoff was won by Leguan. Ottawa's won the majority of the faceoff tonight against Buffalo, which is last in the league in faceoff percentage. So now Gergensen fires it in. And Enroth goes to the Buffalo bench. You got the extra skater on the ice as Gionta comes on. And there's Molson for Stewart. Got tangled up there with McCulloch. Slides it ahead to Myers. Ennis in the corner with it. Final minute now, the third period. Tyler Ennis feeds back to Myers. Lots of traffic. Myers waits. Slaps it across to Ennis. Shoots through traffic, but it's swept to the line, but not up by McCulloch. Myers for Stewart with a drive, and Leonard makes the stop on him. It's a great save by Robin Leonard as Stewart gets a good look, tries to go high short side. Milan McCulloch unable to clear it out. He tries to, to dive to get this out. Doesn't get enough on it. Tyler Myers ends up keeping it in, creating a lane for Stewart as he popped out. And Leonard reads it. He's able to control the rebound on the play. Now it's Pajot for the face off against Gergensen. And Pajot wins it as Grabba digs for the puck in the corner. 40 seconds to go in the period. Pajot has it to the line. Gets it ahead. And
Condra shoots him into the open net. Myers. Up ahead for Gergensen. He finds Ennis. Stewart back with it now. To Ennis. Seconds ticking down on this power play. It goes off a stick out of play. The faceoff will be in the Ottawa zone. This hit Eric Condra stick and goes over the glass. This could have been a, a game over situation and Condra just can't find the middle of the wide open net. Tries to create an outside inside lane and nothing but time but just can't find the four by six as he comes off to the bench very frustrated. He misses that wide open net and now there's just under 20 seconds with a, a big draw in your own zone and this game could have been iced. Now Leguan in for the faceoff against Felino. Scramble draw. Stone fires down the ice. He misses wide. And Zadora back for it. He's going to push that net over a couple feet. Now Stewart comes racing in. Sharp angle shot. Little to save. The rebound skipped in front. And Torres plays it back out. And the Ottawa Senators will win it by a score of 2-1 to one to snap a three-game losing streak. As the Buffalo Sabres continue to sink in the standings. That's great work by Robin Leonard who helped deliver this win. 35 saves, outstanding. The second period was the difference with 21 saves and good redemption for him as he had a four goal, again peri goal against period against Columbus the other night. So he faces 36 shots on goal and here are tonight's Wolves and three stars, Leonard. His star number one now six and one when facing 35 plus shots. Man, McCulloch's got his eighth of the year, and Tyler Myers had a goal and four shots. Also saved a goal for the Buffalo Sabres. So 2 1 is your final score. Next stop for the Ottawa Senators, a home date with the Pittsburgh Penguins on Thursday night. And we will have that for you for Jamie McLennan. And all of us at TSN, I'm Gord Miller. This has been a presentation of TSN, Canada's sports leader. We'll see you on Thursday night from Ottawa. Now, stand by for SportsCenter.